Hey, what's up, YouTube? In today's video, we're going to answer the age-old question, does jailbreaking slow down your iOS devices? Because right off the bat, I thought, of course it does. There's no way that it doesn't because you're installing stuff on top of stock iOS. It has to drastically degrade the performance of your iOS device. Well, I got some really interesting results to share with you guys in today's video that were really surprising. <laughs> Okay, so first up, thank you so much for watching today's video. I really hope you guys enjoy this. This is kind of an interesting topic, and I got some really surprising results, like I said in the intro of this video. Anyway, guys, if you're excited to see those results, don't forget to give this video a huge thumbs up. It took a little bit of time to produce. And of course, if you want to see more content just like this, don't forget to subscribe. All right, let's get directly into today's video. So in today's video, I'm going to be using my iPhone 8 Plus right here running iOS 11.0. And then secondly, I'm going to be using my iPhone 10 running iOS 11.3.1. Now, there are a few differences. One, there are two different devices being the 8 and the 10, but that being the case, they have the same exact processor, the same graphics card, and the same amount of RAM. So kind of comparing these apples to apples is probably okay, but just to be thorough, I went ahead and did most of these tests on each individual device just to show you guys the similarities and the differences. Anyway, the biggest key differentiator here is the fact that one is running iOS 11.0 and one is running iOS 11.3.1. Now we can expect the newer software iteration to actually be faster, in theory that is, but we'll have to wait and see what the results turn out to be like. So again, to start off, this iPhone 8 Plus is running iOS 11.0 and it is not jailbroken in any way. Electra is not installed on this device, neither is Cydia or anything like that. So this is going to be a great control, a great base model to see what type of scores we can expect with this device. So again, the single core here, we have 42, 45, and the multi, we have 10,235. So again, the score can be used as a base comparison to see if jailbreaking later on impacts these results. All right, so like I said, for the second test, I'm going to be using my iPhone 10. Now, it currently is jailbroken, but the jailbreak is not enabled. Again, it's running iOS 11.3.1. But again, like I said, for the second test, I wanted to see what it would be like if the phone had previously been jailbroken, but it's just not currently enabled. So again, I'm just going to run a quick Geekbench score, and let's take a look at what this result is like. All right, so once the test concluded, we actually have a score of 4,251 and a multi-core score of 10,289. So if we compare the scores side by side of a non-jailbroken device compared to one that has previously been jailbroken but the jailbreak is not enabled, they are pretty much identical. So that right there is a great first test. We can say when the phone is not in its jailbroken state, it performs just as well as it would on stock iOS. All right, now for the third test, let's head back to my iPhone 8. Now I just freshly jailbroke this device. As you guys can see, there's Cydia now installed, but there's nothing else, no other tweaks that I've personally installed aside what comes default with Cydia. So this is directly after you freshly jailbreak your device. Let's see if the jailbreak in itself impacts the performance on our iOS devices. All right, so the test is just about wrapped up, but as you guys might initially notice, I got some very interesting results with this test right here. Now, the single core is 4267, right around what we got when it was not jailbroken and when the jailbreak was not enabled, but the multi-core score here is actually even better than when it wasn't enabled. Now, that's probably just a glitch. These scores are all relative, and seeing just a couple hundred points up or down probably does not mean it actually runs better when jailbroken. But what we can take away from this is initially jailbreaking our devices and having Cydia installed does not impact our performance in any way. All right, well, with that being the case, I went back to my iPhone 10. Now, this one has a lot of tweaks already installed. That's the reason why I didn't really want to wipe this guy entirely. I've been doing tweak videos with it all day. So when I restart and re-enable my jailbreak, as you guys can see, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of top tweaks. There's a lot of widgets enabled. Now, I guess I actually didn't show this in the video, but there are currently 89 packages that I've personally installed on this device. Granted, not very many of them are outward facing. There's not many that show a lot of animation or are very CPU intensive. 
So when this test finished up, if I bring it up closer here, we have a single core score of 4226 and a multi core score of 10202. So again, if we compare these to the original scores we got from the very beginning of this video, there really is no significant difference with all of these tweaks installed with my device fully jailbroken on the iPhone 10 and iPhone 8 Plus. So that is just insane news. I guess we've somewhat debunked the rumor that jailbreaking slows down your devices. Furthermore, I was really surprised to see there really is no significant difference between iOS 11.0 and iOS 11.3.1 performance wise. They are also next to identical in Geekbench. Alright, so I feel like I was on an episode of Mythbusters here really trying to prove that jailbreaking does slow down your devices, so on my 8 Plus I went ahead and installed as many tweaks that I could possibly think of that add some animation that could be running in the background that may be CPU intensive. So I added a ton of these tweaks, I already noticed my device was somewhat stuttering, so that is when I really wanted to run a Geekbench score with these tweaks potentially running in the background. Now the reason why I picked these tweaks in particular is because I've noticed in the past just from general use that with them installed my battery life has suffered so I figured something had to have been going on where they are using more CPU power than they should be and when they're using the CPU power that means less CPU power is available for you to use or for your apps. So once these results completed we got a single core score of 4066 and a multi core score of 8617. So, as you guys can see, that is a drastic decline in performance just from three or four tweaks that I knew could potentially be hazardous to my device, especially that fluid widget, especially Fingale, which animates the icons. I mean, these are just a couple that I was thinking of off the top of my head, but things like that that add a ton of animation that use your GPU in the background are what is going to kill your battery life and is going to make your performance suffer. So really, what did we learn at the end of this video? Jailbreaking, even having it jailbroken in the jailbroken state, really does not impact performance at all. It all depends on the tweaks that you have installed. So again, if you want to have your device maintain the performance that it should have initially before being jailbroken, just ensure that you're not adding a ton of tweaks that add consistent animation to your device or animation that could be going on in the background without your knowledge. I mean, things like Cylinder is going to be okay because that animation is only activated when you actually swipe from page to page, but things like the Fluid Widget or Fingale probably are running in the background even when you're in an app. And at least from my experience, it's tweaks like that that hinder your iPhone's performance. Again, just to reiterate, it really doesn't seem to matter how many tweaks you have installed. Again, I had 89 packages from Cydia on my iPhone 10 and pretty much maintaining stock iOS performance. It really just depends on which tweaks you have installed and ensuring there's not one or two that are really dragging your device's performance down. Anyway guys, just to wrap things up, here's all the results that we got from today's video and a little bit more. I went back and ran the GPU tests in Geekbench to see how those are affected as well. And these are the results I got. Again, the major takeaway that we can get from this video is that jailbreaking, the initial jailbreak, itself really doesn't impact your performance in the slightest bit. It seems to all depend on certain tweaks and maybe the amount of tweaks, but more so it seems to be there's just one or two tweaks that primarily focus around animation that seem to be dragging my device's performance down the most. Again, even with the scores being reduced to about 4,000 on the single and 8,600 on the multi, I highly doubt you're going to notice a difference in day-to-day -day use. This really is only going to come into play when you're playing a graphic intensive or CPU intensive game or doing something along those lines. Anyway, back in the days of jailbreaking the iPhone 3GS, iPhone 4, 5, 5S, these scores were anywhere between 500 and 1500. So if you saw a 500 point or in this case a 1500 point reduction, that pretty much rendered your device useless and unusable. So that's one reason why back in the day jailbreaking your devices slowed down the performance vastly. But now when these scores are 10 times what they used to be, even a couple hundred point reduction really is not going to render any difference in your day to day use. Anyway guys, these are the results that I got. Let me know down in the comments section how the Electra jailbreak has been treating you. And let me know if you're on iOS 11 to 11.1.2 
or if you upgraded to iOS 11.2 to 11.3.1 while you had the chance and you're on the latest version of the Electra jailbreak. Anyway, if you guys liked this video and thought it was interesting, please let me know with a huge thumbs up. And if you want to see more content just like this one, don't forget to subscribe before you go. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. But until next time, this is Tony signing out.